Right, where was I before the camera battery died? Oh yes, Mora Hunter, not Huntsman, Hunter. Um, carbon steel, nice comfy handle. My favourite knives for craft use are Mora's because they have a Scandinavian grind, basically. Two and a half mil stock or two mil stock depending on the model and it's just a, a straight taper down to a little micro bevel. Right, first task is to um, skive the edges of this as much as possible. By which I mean feather the edges by removing a little triangular section. That's a combine harvester making that noise in the background, just in case you're interested in the ways of the country. Yeah, where did we go? Yes, I got mixed up with my 28s and 29 mils yesterday, the other day, and ended up going for 30 mils anyway, so... If you start off a little bit more, um, then if it's too big, you can always take it off and shave a smidge off or shave it in situ. But if it's too small, then you have to cut another one. Also, if the thong is, at this stage anyway, I'm just going to feather that out like so. And try a different method for the rest of it. Um, yeah, if the thong is a little bit bigger, once I put this on, I always have the option of building up the handle foundation with tape or brown paper like you would a riding crop. Um, the less fiddling around like that I have to do, the better. Is that sharp enough? Just about. I can use a head knife for this. I have a head knife, round, semicircular shaped blade, but I find it hard on my hand. Normal, everyone will find their favourite tools for a job. My usual beveling, skiving, pairing knife is the carbon steel Mora electrician's knife. Let's do it here.
Okay, that's the edges. And now, let's go that side for the end where it goes here. So let's have a pen. Mark that off. So now a long shallow cut from here to the edge. Oops. So, sometimes you get it in one go, and sometimes you've got to whittle away at it a bit. <clears throat> um, okay. So, how is that looking thus far? Wrap this around. Got a bit of a bump, and I have a bit of a ridge here. So I shall leave that bit of skiving as it is, maybe just dress the end. I just wanted to sort of take the thickest off, because the rest I'll do when it's stuck down. Right, how are you looking? <clears throat> Let's stick it on and find out. Double-sided sticky tape. This is just the business to hold it in position, as indeed is the binding. I mean, the binding or the tape, that's not really a strength member. It's just to hold it there until the whole lot can be plastered over. I have gone to the trouble of removing uh, binding 
twine as I plait, but it's it doesn't seem to make much difference one way or the other, so I just leave it. Anyway, we'll come to all that. So, a moment of truth, or a moment of partial lies and deceit. Let's have a look. Okay, so a quick go on the calipers and see what's going on. Also doing it in two fillers means that if there's not quite enough in the first one, I can make the second one wider as necessary at some point. Okay. Of course it helps to measure on one of the little bits of lead rather than one of the little troughs. How much am I after? Seven and a bit. It's pushing eight. Yes, it's on average about right. It's about as close as I'm going to get by guessing. I'm going to have to now grease this and bind it on. <coughs> And I think I might just put another little layer of tape over the top of this to keep it in place while I'm binding it. Okay, let's hang up. <coughs> Cough splutter. Oh, I need a long one. Tired today. Too much partying. If you can ever have such a thing as too much partying. Not to worry. Oh, Christ, let's use this one. <coughs> right, first of all, let's grease this bit of leather with. Not exactly. Well, okay, I use Sedgwick's Original Leather Care product, nifty old name, isn't it? Um, for a basis for plaiting soap. It's, what is it? Natural oils, fats and beeswax. Plaiting soap isn't quite as greasy as the grease, the neat grease. And my current formula is one top of this stuff, that's 500 ml, 400 grams to 80 grams of soap um, grated up and dissolved into 375 mils of water that's just about a saturated solution and then uh, hot water and then in goes the fat 
and mix it up so it's nice and creamy and, uh, and 20 drops of tea tree oil which I read are good for keeping beasties at bay and they make it smell of tea tree oil which is nice so that's my plating soap formula right let's slather some of this on <coughs> This makes the, the leather more supple, feeds it, makes it stronger, adds a little bit of weight, um, makes the other layers slide more easily over it, so there's less friction in, inside the whip. Give it all the best start I can in life. This is where I'd expect it to stretch a couple of inches. I already, as I was um, looking at it, managed to pull about an inch or so off the end, which is why I cut it a little bit longer even than the revised figure. You get to know your little bits of suede. Some, some are stronger than others, some need a little bit more, some are okay. And of course, no two are the same, which makes standardization rather tricky. Unless you find a whole pile of the stuff in one batch and go right I'm gonna buy a thousand pounds worth of this and store it somewhere for the next ten years. Reet. That appears to be about as greasy as it's going to get without it just sitting on the surface. Lovely. Okay, time to bind it in place. Yeah, yeah. Let's get rid of some of this gloop. Right. Bear of a blade, yes I do, but... Okay. This is my little binding reel. Isn't that sweet? Um, I have done a number of different things. I had a... a a line under tension and I'd roll it like that and I get it got sore wrists and then I'd roll it like this and I got sore thumbs came down with gamekeeper's thumb kind of repetitive strain injury so I thought I'd let gravity do the work this whole thing weighs cause I note this as well 490 489 grams And it consists of a bunch of strips of um, sheet lead wrapped in cardboard with a little bit of oak stick to provide the right kind of friction, uh, a 22mm PVC tube for the, um, the reel itself and I load that up from a, a, a drill and this is the twine I'm using. Uh, PCC satin, don't know what that means, M20, that's the size, don't know what it means. It's holding this tent together, repairing one of the zips. And you get it in two kilometre rolls. Poly cotton, thread, very, very, very strong. And not bulky. Oh yes, that's the little doodah that goes in the end of the, the 22 mil. It's a port cork and a screw and that goes in the chuck of my drill and it goes wah like that and load it all up right <clears throat> simples uh, spindle elastic bands and the upshot is that it's got just enough friction to do that okay where's the end of the fiberglass roughly here now for the difficult bit, holding this on for the first one. Reach around and do that. And so I have got 490 grams worth of um, tension. So it's pretty much the same. 
you it's all exceptionally gloopy now that I've gone and glooped it all up. So what I'm going to do is carry on binding this down the way like so, then throw a little hitch in it and then bind it the other way. This is going to take some time which I shall not bore you with so I'll see you when I'm ready for the next stage. Bye for now.